Thank you for joining us for another online sermon from Redeemer. We pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, sanctify us with the truth, for thy word is truth. Amen. This morning we reflect upon the Holy Gospel for today from Mark chapter 9, 14 through 29. Faith. What is it? Why is it important? What effect should it have on our entire lives? These are questions that Jesus answers as we turn to this text for today. And Jesus heals a boy who is demon-possessed. As he deals with the situation, he speaks not only to that son, but to the father and to the disciples. And hence, you and I learned through this text today about faith's place in our prayer life and in godly service to the Lord. We begin with the thought that faith does not possess power apart from its source. Faith has no power of itself. Faith of itself is kind of like a pipe that runs from your house to outside somewhere. If that's not connected, connected to a gas source or a water source, that pipe of itself offers no benefits. Faith needs to be tied to a proper source in order for it to accomplish what it is meant to accomplish. The point here is when our faith is connected to Christ Jesus, God can bless us in countless ways. So it's very important that our faith is centered on the Lord. So we look at our text for today, and we see that Jesus sees this young man demon-possessed. And when he talks to the father about this, the father says, well, that's the way he's been since birth. Then the father says something interesting to Jesus. If you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. If you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Here we come to see that God acting in our lives is not contingent upon the amount of faith we have, but it is contingent upon God's compassion toward us. It's very interesting when you look at this text, okay? The Father says, if you can do anything, have compassion on us. How does Jesus respond? He reprimands the Father. He says, if you can? Jesus is saying, you've got to be kidding me. If I can do it? And then Jesus says, all things are possible for one who believes. Jesus reprimands the Father's faith, saying, your faith isn't great. It's not strong. If I can do something, I can do anything. What the Father does next is really interesting. He says, I believe. Help me with my unbelief. The Father acknowledges the incomplete nature of his faith in Jesus. Does the Father's prayer life reflect anything of the type of faith we have in the Lord? We believe that Jesus died for us and rose again, and rightfully so. We believe that Jesus conquered death in the grave and that all who believe in him have everlasting life, and rightfully so. 
But our faith life is not all it should be. How many times in our lives, seriously, have we practiced the yo-yo prayer? How often have we heard Jesus say, cast all your care upon me for I care for you? And so we bring this prayer to Jesus. We toss it out there. And after the amen, what we do is we yo-yo it back. We hold it in our hands and we live as if God isn't going to take care of anything. We live in fear, in doubt, in worry. We don't believe that God works out all things for good to them that love God. We know we should. But let's fess up this morning. Let's fess up about this. We believe, but God, we need help with our unbelief. Our faith is like that of the Father. If you can do anything is often more the way we pray than knowing that God will do and fulfill his will as we bring things to him in prayer. So it is that as we look at this further, we see that while Jesus reprimands the Father's faith, he still brings healing to the Son. And the importance of that is this concept. God is the power behind answered prayer, not faith. Faith is not the power. Faith of itself has no power. The power of faith is found in Jesus Christ, who has the power to do all things. Now, this is important because we live in, out there with some Christians who would come to teach us that if we had enough faith, all of our problems would be gone. We would have no more problems. I encountered this a number of years ago when we had an individual who had a serious, serious liver cancer. He had been a very strong, healthy, exuberant man, and oh my, he couldn't hardly walk anymore. And he was in the hospital, and some friend came up to he and his wife one day and said to them, if you really believed in Jesus, your cancer would be gone, and you could walk out of the hospital. Now, do you know what happened? I got there a few hours later, and these, this couple who had been with, walking with the Lord since baptism asked me, Pastor, don't I trust in Jesus? They doubted their very faith. Because this man had said, if you really have faith, you'd be healed. What our text shows us is that the strength of healing is not in the faith. It is in the God who answers prayer. That's important to always remember. There are other episodes in Scripture. John 5. Jesus here healed a paralytic at the pool, but that paralytic did not know Jesus. In John chapter 9, there was a man blind from birth, didn't know Jesus. Jesus brought healing to that blind man. The concept here is that God wants us to trust in his power, but never get the idea that I control God by the faith I possess. That is not the case. The point here is God's ability to accomplish a miracle in our life is not contingent upon our faith. God could do anything. He healed three people who didn't know him. He calls on us in prayer to submit to his compassionate will for our lives knowing that he is well aware of what is eternally best for us. So when we talk about praying in faith, it is coming and saying, I trust God, you can do anything. But it is also submitting ourselves to the very will of God, who is going to do what is eternally beneficial for us. That's why the episode of Paul in 2 Corinthians 12 is so important. You might recall it. 
Paul's got this thorn in the flesh. It's something that's nagging him. And it's kind of interesting. We don't know what it was, whether it was Jewish persecution, whether it was some sort of physical ailment. We probably don't know because it'll fit anything in our lives, a thorn in the flesh. And Paul says three times he prays, Lord, take this thorn in the flesh from me. He did it in faith. He turned to the Lord, knowing God can do all things. And then God says to him, no, I'm not taking the thorn in the flesh away. And the reason is my grace is sufficient for you, for when you are weak, then I am strong. In other words, God was telling Paul, I'm going to keep you humble with that thorn in the flesh so that you will always rely upon me for your strength so that I can accomplish my will through your life. So what's really important for us to realize today is that when we come to the Lord in prayer, faith is submitting to the knowledge that God is all-powerful and he can do all things, but also submitting to his compassion, which means he will do all things for our eternal welfare. It is important for us, therefore, to stay focused on God's compassion for us in Jesus Christ. That's really where we've got to stay focused. Our text talks about it. That man says, if you can do anything, and then says, if you can have compassion on us. We have to see that God is compassionate. And we see the compassion in the greatest miracle that God ever performed. And that miracle is God becoming man. Paul wrote in the suffering chapter of Scripture, Romans chapter 8, he said, If God did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Never forget the miracle of miracles. It all starts out when an angel comes to Mary and says, Mary, you're going to be the bearer of the promised Messiah. And remember how she responded? How's this going to happen? I'm a virgin. And the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, for nothing is impossible with God. You see, God had compassion upon the world and so he sent his son god's power is greater than our minds can comprehend and his love tied to his limitless power can do more than we could think possible a virgin giving birth to a child impossible god becoming a human being one who is holy taking on our sinfulness so we could be made holy. That's God's compassion for us. Paul talks about it in Romans 8, and he says, One will scarcely die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good person one might dare to die. But God shows us his love in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, in 9-11... And there were great acts of sacrifice made. But it was Americans helping Americans, wasn't it? What if it would have been the enemy who had flown the airplane into the tower? You see, God in Jesus Christ died for that person too. You see, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were his enemies, he came to save us. That's his compassion. A little boy once said, Jesus, how much do you love me? And Jesus stretched out his arms and died on the cross. There lies Jesus' compassion. And it is that limitless power of God connected with his great compassion that brings us new life in him. 
And so we can come to him in prayer. Will he perform a miracle? Will he give us exactly what we want? He's going to give us what we need to have for our eternal benefit. And that's all we need to know. He is this caring father who will always take care of his people. So that as David said, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We can live in peace because we have a God of compassion who says nothing in all the world will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So that's the aspect of faith and how it is connected to prayer. But then I had a little problem. And I gotta confess to you, I had a problem. I probably worked through this, writing this sermon twice and I looked at it and I thought, man, this still isn't right. Because there's two verses at the end of this text that have to have significance when Jesus is talking to his disciples. We can't ignore, ignore those last two sentences, two verses. And there we find that after the, the boy is healed, after Jesus showed compassion to this father whose faith was not perfect, then we have Jesus coming to the disciples. And, that Jesus, and the disciples ask Jesus, Lord, why couldn't we cast out that evil spirit? And Jesus said, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. If we reflect upon that a little bit, what God is saying is, godly works of service will only occur through us when we trust in God's power and submit to his will. If we're not going to trust in God's power, if we're not going to submit to the will of God, then we will not be used by God as God wants us to be used. To appreciate this, let's just look at Jesus briefly in the Garden of Gethsemane from the human perspective. Now, he was true God, and he knew that the cross was before him because he was true God. But as true man, he is dealing with knowing about that cross and saying, man, I don't know if I want to go through with this. Remember three times he prays, Lord, if it is possible, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And the key element here is he prays for the Father's help. He prays to submit to the Father's will. And the, power, and the Father empowered him to go forth to die on the cross for us. In fact, in Hebrews it says he faced that, cra that cross for the joy of our salvation. He took it on with joy because he knew it would be our eternal deliverance. The Apostle Paul speaks of the importance of having faith in order that God would accomplish his purpose in us. He, he writes to Timothy in 2 Timothy 4, as my first offense, because Paul was always on trial for proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, at my first offense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them, but the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it, so I was rescued from the lion's mouth. You see what Paul's saying there? He's saying, as I trusted in Christ and submitted to his will, God used me mightily. And I was able to proclaim the gospel to many Gentiles, and I was spared from the lion's mouth. It reminds me of a sermon, uh, a sermon series I've been hearing from the book of Daniel. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They went to the fiery furnace rather than deny the Lord. They stood up for the Lord Jesus Christ. Daniel, all he had to do was stop praying. Daniel didn't do it. He continued his spiritual ritual. 
and he ended up in the lion's den. But God gave those men the strength to do what needed to be done for the proclamation of the gospel. Did you ever think or wonder, have I not see, have I ceased to be used by God as he could have used me because I haven't submitted my faith to his power? You know, you hear all the time, I can't do this, I can't do that. You know, or you got, well, but, 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 all the reasons why not to serve. But remember, it is Paul who said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. And so faith has an importance in godly service. Faith doesn't rely upon oneself. It relies upon God who is able to do all things through us. That's why faith is important. Its source is with God, the compassionate God of all power, who enables us to accomplish what of ourselves we could not accomplish. There was a small community in which there was a well-known Christian woman, well-known for her uh, simple faith, her strength in times of trial, for her committed service to the Lord. Well, one day a new woman came into town and she had heard about this great woman of faith and so she wanted to meet up with her. So she met up with her one day and she asked this Christian woman, are you the woman of great faith? She replied, no, I am not. I am not the woman with great faith, but I am the woman with a little faith in a great God. God wants us to take note of our relationship to him in faith this morning. Our faith in Christ has an impact on our service to the Lord. What we come to see this morning is that our faith is not perfect. It's time to fess up. We believe But God, help me with my unbelief. May the word of God we heard this morning strengthen our faith in his power to do all things and lead us to submit to his love by which he cares for us in all matters. May we trust in him and lean not on our own understanding. Amen. We pray that you are inspired by this message. Please join us again next week for another online sermon from Redeemer.